Welcome back to the Insane Asylum. This is your host, Commander Asylum. In this video, I would like to discuss some of the comments that I received on my first So You Want to Be a Space Trucker video. Also, I want to cover some of the fits and tips and tricks uh, that I use as a hauler. And uh, this is going to really focus on the T1 hauling because I know in my first video I was in a freighter. And a freighter is kind of a, an in-game hauling solution. And I mentioned in that video that I would not normally haul in a T1 hauler, but it is possible to haul in a T1 hauler, and I would like to talk about that in this video. I also want to discuss some of the challenges that come with that um, as a beginning hauler, but as a new bro, it is possible to have a reasonable hauling career early on. Now, it does require uh, probably about a month of skill training and you know, maybe a hundred million-esque. We'll break that down here in a little bit. Um, so, first thing I want to talk about is ship fit. So, if you watched my first video, you know your trade space is your cargo capacity versus your tank. Uh, you can in you can increase your cargo capacity, but that will lower your tank. Or you could raise your tank, which will lower lower your cargo capacity. And I'm going to give you some examples of some fits in here that I'll show to you. So. I went ahead and put some of these fits here and put them in this handy chart. This chart is arranged in order of most cargo capacity down to the least cargo capacity. Um, I'm using Kaldari haulers. Now it's important to note that my hauling character here is not actually trained into Kaldari, nor is he trained into shields. So when you look at these fits on my character, it's you know uh, these are shield tanked haulers, so I, I can't fit these because I don't have the skills, but I chose Kaldari because they're a very popular T1 hauling series, along with Galante, which is what I am skilled into. So if you remember, we mentioned there's two different types of T1 haulers. You have the smaller, faster, tougher ship, then you have the bigger, slower, weaker ship. So the, the Badger for Kaldari is that slower, uh, the uh, faster, tankier, and smaller ship. And the Tyra has a bigger cargo hold, but it's also weaker and slower. So um, in these fits, I tried max cargo, max tank, and then at least with the Badger, I tried to build a balanced build that kind of balances cargo capacity with, with tank. Um, but as you can see generally, so this is arranged from the most amount of cargo you can haul to the least amount of cargo that you haul. And what I have here is I've calculated using a gank, uh, a ganking calculator, which I'll include a link to the description below so you can look at this, play around with it, and, and see what's profitable for gankers to gank. So what I've done is I've calculated what the cargo value can be in your cargo hold that beyond which will make you profitable to kill. So if you're flying this Tyra here with this fit, this is a max cargo fit with no tank on it. So it has a measly 3,000 EHP but has a whopping 36,000 uh, cubic meter of cargo hold, but in that, if you haul any more than 6 million isk in your cargo hold, then you are profitable for gankers to kill. So, pretty much, if you go beyond these limits here, you are a gank target for profit, which makes you a gank target. Um, also, I took that I put here the number of gankers that it'll actually take to blow that ship up. So, this one right here it only takes one person and a catalyst to blow your ship up. So, that's pretty easy to do. Now as we start going down, you'll see the Tyra is kind of like the two higher ones. Um, even, you know, adding tank to this ship, as you can see, it almost goes to five times the EHP, which makes it much more difficult to gank. It barely has an effect on the cargo hold and allows you to carry three times as much cargo value before you become a gank target. It also requires three gankers, which is more obvious. If you're actually scouting yourself out, then it's actually more obvious. <laughs> If there's three gankers on the gate, now if you just see one person on the gate, that or on the gate, that can be difficult to actually catch if you're scouting out. But but three gankers on the gate is a very obvious uh, to anyone that's actually scouting. Now you can see the badger comes in here with max cargo, um, you know, fit for max cargo with tank. It has you know, even max cargo fit here is uh, still has quite a bit of EHP. Um, but as opposed to the Tyra, only holds half as much. Cargo can hold haul about the same amount of, of value of cargo in the cargo hold. But now where the Badger is going to really break out here is once you start adding tank modules to it. So this balanced fit that I have here, 
has twice the EHP as the Tyra does um, for that max cargo fit Tyra. Of course, it can only hold 8,000, but if you look at this cargo value, you can fit significantly more cargo value in this, just that added tank that you get. It takes five gankers to kill this ship. Now, if you take away the cloak from the Tyra, which I do not recommend you do, do not recommend it, but if you take away the cloak from the Tyra, it allows you to fit a max tank. And with that max tank, it gives you a very good EHP. You can actually carry a decent amount of cargo value, and it requires four gankers. But if there's one thing I would never compromise on in a T1 hauler, it'll be the cloak and the micro warp drive. But by sacrificing the cloak and micro warp drive and a Tyra fit, you can actually fit some large shield extenders in there, which gives you significantly more EHP. Now, a Badger Max Tank makes no compromises, so you can fit a micro warp drive and cloak, which makes you significantly safer coming off gates, which is when you're going to get ganked, that's probably where you're going to get ganked at. You can see it's got massive amounts of EHP or relative to all of its brothers and sisters here. Um, but the cargo is only 4,000 cubic meters, but you can haul 36 million cargo in it before you become a ganking target. So hopefully this is useful. And this is the ganking planner. I'll include a link this to the description below, but this is a sample calculator that gankers use to find out whether it's profitable to kill you or not. So in this one right here, um, if you go across the tabs, you have fittings. These are fittings for the attackers. What I have selected here is a T1 catalyst of the 0.5 control system. I have Concord's not pre-spawned. Um, some of these right here are just modifiers. So when most ganker is multi-box, so they have reduced efficiency um, since they have to go through and click attack on each of theirs. So they expect about a 20% reduction in efficiency. Um, so this accounts for that, and then a 5% margin of error that's in there as well. So you can see some of the ships that I've fit out here and see what they look like. Now here's like the Badgers and Tyras that I built for this video, and you can see where these numbers break out. But with one of these spreadsheets, um, you can see, you can build different fits in here. So you can have a T2 Talos or a Tornado or a Catalyst. And then you can modify response times uh, for Concord in here as well. So this is a ganking calculator, and this is what I used to build this right here, just so you have an idea of how much value you can haul before you become, uh, you know, before you're hauling with a target on your back. Okay, so I want to talk about some of the fits that we talked about here. So this one here is the the Badger. This is the Max Tank Badger. So you can see here, so again, I'm not actually trained into shields on my hauling alt. I'm primarily a freighter pilot and we don't use shields. Um, or oh, shield upgrades specifically is the thing here. We don't use shield upgrades in freighters. So what's killing me here on this is I do not have shield upgrades five which makes this take up 10% more power grid, which pushes me over right here. But if you have shield upgrades five, then you can actually fit this large compact shield extender along with this 50 mega Newton compact micro warp drive along with a cloak, which makes you um, relatively safe hauler. Now, going back to my table, this is the one that can hold this, this one right here. So you can haul 36 million in this ship right here before you become a target. So you can see this ship's worth about 15 million, it's probably closer to 20 million, all said and done. Um, these numbers are usually a pretty, a bit low than if you just bought everything off sell orders in Cheetah. Um, some of the other ones I built out here, so I have the Max Cargo Badger. So we sacrifice significant tanks. If you look back here, it's really these low slots or kind of that trade space I'm working with here. So I'm changing my reinforced bulkheads, switching those over to expanded cargo holds. Significantly reduces my tank, but then significantly boosts my um, my cargo space it's over here. There it is. So I get significantly more cargo, but significantly compromised tank. Usually when you choose a fit here, you want to choose your rigs so that you don't have to swap your rigs out. and and so what I meant by the trade space here is as you take different contracts, what you want to do is you always want to remove as many cargo expanders as you can. 
before you haul someone's contract. So, so this is kind of like the maximum. This is the maximum amount of cargo. So if I was hauling something that was only, say, 3,000 cubic meters, I'm not going to fly with these three cargo expanders. I'm actually going to remove probably all of them. Yeah, so I'm going to remove all of those cargo expanders and probably even put some reinforced bulkheads on there. But these rigs, I'm not going to pull these rigs out. So whatever I choose here, I'm just I'm kind of stuck with them. Now these are kind of cheap right here, but still, uh, you're not going to be making enough profit margins to be able to just rip out these these rigs between contracts. So you just choose which rigs you think are going to be the most consistent across all your contracts. And then you use your low slots as that trade space to trade tank between tank and and cargo capacity. Okay, I got the tyrus coming up next. First one is this balanced tire that I made. So it's balanced, as in, it uh, again, it's these you know, it's these shield upgrades. My shield tanking modules here that are killing me on this. But uh, this one here has a cloak and a micro warp drive fit to it. So one of the problems with these tyras, with these ships with the bigger cargo hold, is they have a measly power grid. You look at the Badger here, it's got 250 power grid almost to it. But when I look over here at the bigger ship, the Tyra, I only have 137 power grid, and that cripples you. That makes that makes it so that if you do this micro warp drive cloak fit here, then it makes it much more difficult to fit anything else. So I have to spin some of my rigs and some of my low spot slots to actually raise my power grid. So yeah. So this is the balanced Tyra. This is if I was if I was going to haul the Tyra, this is probably the fit I would use. But like I said in my first video, I'm not going to haul with a T1 hauler because the uh, amount that you can haul is just it's really not enough. It's really hard to find contracts for these. Okay, the next one's going to be max cargo. So I've ripped out all the low slots, put it for max cargo. Again, this shield upgrades is what's killing me here because I have this large shield extender. Now, as I mentioned before, I don't have a micro warp drive and cloak. <laughs> attached to this one. So I swapped the micro warp drive cloak, put that a, uh, with a shield extender into here, and since I don't have to spend all my low slots increasing my power grid, I can actually use all cargo expanders. I would definitely not recommend using this fit, unless you're hauling maybe like Tritanium, um, because the, the value to gank this is just, it's just so cheap. It just takes one catalyst to gank this ship. And then last but not least, I have the max tank Tyra, which I got the reinforced bulkheads down here, which reduces my cargo capacity significantly. Um, still has the tank, but also does not have the micro dive for cloak, which allows me to fit these tank modules down here instead of trying to get my power grid up to be able to fit the micro driving cloak. So I'll leave some of these fits in the description below so that you can import them and try them out yourself and tweak them as you would like. Okay, so let's talk about how much money it costs to get in hauling into these T1 haulers. So I'm going to bring up the table that I had before. So a good point of reference is you obviously need to buy the ship. Most of these ships are about 20 million esque. That's because I fit a T2 tank to them, which increases the value of these significantly, but it makes them much more difficult to gank by having that T2 tank. So, and, so you need to buy the ship, obviously, so there's about 20 million. And then you wanna make sure you have enough for collateral. So to take a contract, you're gonna have to pay that collateral, which you'll get back after you successfully complete the contract. But you have to, that, have, to have that ISK just sitting around to be able to sink into that collateral while the contract is in progress. So contract should match the value of what's in your cargo. So if I'm flying, let's say I'm flying this bad, this balanced badger right here. This ship's worth about 20 million, and I can haul a max cargo value of 30 million. So just right off the bat, I need 20 million for the badger, and I need 30 million for collateral. So that's 50 million esque that I need sitting around. Now, if you are actually using hauling as a source of income, you usually want to have enough isk to buy another ship in case you get ganked. And that ship's not going to do you any good unless you, again, have that 30 million collateral. So whatever you think you would need here, you want to double it. So that if you do get ganked, you can just get back into another hauling ship and start grabbing more contracts at 30 million isk collateral. So I'm saying 100 million isk is what you can 
what you safe uh, what you need in your bank account to be able to safely haul using you know most of these fits here. Now, if you're fine, this this uh, yeah something like this, this Tyra right here. Well, you're not going to take very many contracts that are only asking for six million collateral, and those are very rare. But you know, six million collateral on a twenty million ship, you know, it's twenty six million. That's what you need for that. So this is a much lower barrier to entry to get into this ship but again your contracts are going to be very limited it's already going to be hard enough to find contracts that are going to have collateral as low as 30 million or even 36 million most contracts you're going to find are going to be collateral of 500 million or so and so that's what, kind of what you're looking at to kind of get it in the door here okay so um, slight mistake that I made in my so you want to be a space trucker video was I was talking about delivery to citadels. As a general rule, I do not haul to citadels. And it used to be that someone could just strip your docking access after you take the contract, if you take the contract with your actual hauler alt. So then you arrive at the station to deliver and they won't let you dock, and then you fail the contract and they get to collect whatever collateral that was in there. Well, they added a cargo box to the for these these player owned stations where you click on the station and then you can open the cargo. I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like. Okay, so this is a player owned station that Asylum is sitting in right now. So I'm gonna go outside of this and I'm gonna show you how you can open up that that Citadel's inventory. So you select the Citadel here in the overview and then on your selections here you can click this open box. And that opens a cargo box that you can then you can grab something, drop it in, and then transfer. And then from there, once it's in the Citadel, so your delivery package is in the Citadel that needs to be delivered to, you go to your hamburger menu, go to Finance, Finance, Contracts. Go to Contracts. I don't have any contracts here, but you would see your courier contract that's in progress. You click on that, open it up, and then complete contract. And as long as the package is in the Citadel that it's supposed to be in for delivery, you will successfully deliver that package without actually being able to dock and otherwise interact directly with that package. Now, something that they can do to defeat that now is they can actually put the put the Fortizar or whatever Astro House, whatever you're delivering to, that Citadel could get put into hull, so they can just attack their own station, put it in a hull timer, and that locks down a lot of that stuff, including this cargo box delivery method. So it's still something to watch out for, but you're not 100% absolutely screwed if you do take a courier contract or a Citadel and they strip your access, trying to, to scam you out of your money there. Okay, one of the other things I want to talk about are Weber Alt. So a lot of haulers, especially haulers that are freighter pilots, because a freighter is worth so much and you haul so much value in a freighter compared to T1 ships, and because they align so slowly, a lot of freighter pilots will use scouts, they will also use webbing alts, and sometimes, and, and what I like to do is have my scout be my Weber alt. So popular ships for that are Slashers, Hyenas, and Hugans. So it requires two Omega accounts. One Omega account for you to fly the freighter, and a second Omega account so that you can dual box the, the two accounts. And then the lowest barrier to entry there is, of course, going to be the Slashers. So three webs on a Slasher with a micro warp drive is, you know, enough to do a good enough job of getting you almost instantly off the gates as a freighter. So that massively, massively increases your survivability as a freighter pilot when you're, one, most importantly, scouting yourself out. And two, if, you know, the, it does look hairy when you're about to, to warp off the gate, you can web yourself off that gate. So really only an insta-locker at that point can stop your freighter from getting off the gate. Uh, the freighters, so these these webbers are less useful for going into a gate, which is also a danger zone for freighters. It doesn't really help you dock up to a station because you may need to make sure that you, you land inside the docking ring and webbing is going to slow that down. If anything, it's not going to help you out there. And you usually don't use them coming off of a station because the webbing really only helps when you start with zero speed, which when you come out of the station, you already have velocity in the undocking direction. So webbing is not going to really help you much there. But probably the most dangerous place for, for haulers is 
you know, coming off of a gate. So when you're just warp through a gate and you're trying to get off the other side of the gate, that's probably where you're going to be ganked. So anything that helps you out there is going to help your survivability. So webbing is one of the best ways to do that. Now, if you send your webber forward, so I always, when I'm webbing, I always send my webber forward one system ahead of me, and they're my scout. And I warp so fast in my freighter that that my freighter will beat my webbing all through the next gate because of the aggression timer. You get a one minute aggression timer when you web your freighter. My freighter flies so fast that it beats my webbing all through that gate. So I don't usually web gate to gate. I use my webber as a scout and then if things look hairy, if there's something on the gate that, that looks suspicious to me, then, then I'll use my scout to web my freighter off the gate. And, you know, some suspicious ships are, well, there's suspicious characters, so anybody, um, you know, I love Hawk, he's uh, one of my favorite players, um, but he conveniently names all of his characters Hawk, he's a multi-boxer that likes to gank, so if you see any Hawks on the gate, on the gate, uh, one of his favorite ones is Gripping Hawk, and he usually flies a, um, I think it's a Coveter, or he flies one of those mining ships, but the mining ships will insta-lock you and tackle you, so... That's one of the suspicious ships I look for, are those mining ships. Sometimes you'll see boosted gnosises. Um, boosted as in you'll see a, uh, a uh, command ship using command bursts and linking SIBOs uh, to the gnosis or some other ship that can get an immediate tackle on you. So those are some suspicious things to look for. Or if you see gankers in the system, and uh, you know how many gankers it's going to take to tackle your ship uh, and to kill your ship. And, that's kind of a judgment call that you have to make. And, and sometimes I will, you know, if I'm going from, say, Udama to Savala, I might just let my freighter sit on the Udama to Savala gate for a few extra seconds while my aggression timer clears, and then I send my, my scout and Weber through to the next system to make sure there's not another trap set for me on the other side over there. Because sometimes they'll do that, and they'll try to catch you in multiple locations. So, so that's that. Uh, webbing alts, extremely useful and make you much more difficult to kill. So one thing to watch out for is getting concorded in your webbing alt. So um, there's two ways to get around getting concorded. So that you don't, when, when you aggress your freighter by webbing them, you don't get the police called in and get your hyena or whatever ship you're using um, blapped by concord. First way to do that is by a duel. So you can, from your freighter pilot, request to duel your webbing alt. Accept it on your webbing ult, and then you can freely web for five minutes um, while that dual timer is active. And of course, any aggress, any aggression that happens in that duel is going to reset that five minute timer. The other way is to put both of them in the same corp with friendly fire turned on, and then in high sec, you can web your freighter pilot and not, not get concorded. Um, one thing to watch out for is Sometimes the Ginkers will send dual requests to freighter pilots as they jump through the gate. So they'll see you jump into the system and they'll just send you a dual request, hoping that you get mistaken or get confused thinking that that is your webbing alt that just dual requested your freighter pilot and hit accept and then they'll blow you up. So the way to do that is open up your settings menu, go to gameplay, go down here to auto reject invitations for dueling this right here so on your freighter pilot you make sure always want to make sure that this is checked so that you don't accidentally fall for that okay there was another interesting question that I saw someone asking why don't you put a damage control in one of your low slots would that make you even more survival survivable and the answer is you cannot put a damage control in the low slot of a freighter so if you look at the freighter it has 3.6 power grid total and one point actually I think it's three I think it's standard it's one and three so you have one cpu and, and three power grid but here i have 1.2 cpu and 3.6 power grid now if you look at a damage control if you look at a damage control here it requires 30 teraflops of CPU usage, but you only have 1.2, so you cannot fit a damage control to a freighter. These fitting restrictions here pretty much restrict you to hyperspatial accelerators, um, 
inertial stabilizers, and reinforced bulkheads. So it greatly limits what you can fit there. And CCP uses this to control what fittings we can actually use to freighters by, by restricting these and then setting things like these reinforced bulkheads such that that that's one of the only things that a freighter can fit. They can then make sure that they reinforce this. Hey, you're going to sacrifice cargo cargo size for tank because the damage control is not going to reduce your cargo size, but it's going to increase your tank. But they want freighter pilots and really all haulers to to play that risk versus reward game, which is what this really comes down to. Okay, another thing I want to talk about is implants. Now, as a new player, you probably don't want to use implants, but once you get a few billion isk in your wallet and you want to make yourself significantly faster hauling routes, and I would really only recommend this for freighter pilots or jump freighter pilots, um, because it's really just not worth it when you're in T1 haulers or even the T2 haulers, it's really just not worth it because the ISK investment in implants, but on my freighter alt, I fly with high grade ascendancy. There's two schools of thought here. There's, you can use nomads or ascendancies. Nomads can cut your align time in all, about half. So your align time can go from like 40 seconds to 20 seconds if you use a set of mid grade or high grade nomads. Um, I use high grade ascendancies because after doing a lot of math and a lot of theory to practice on this, I found that for when you go gate to gate in a freighter or a jump freighter, the ascendancies get you off the gate much faster, but you warp much slower. So for the systems where you have short distances between gates to gates, then the nomads are going to get you through that system faster because most of your time is going to be spent aligning. So anything you do to reduce that is going to speed you up from gate to gate for those shorter distances. Now, for longer distances when going gate to gate, most of your time is spent accelerating and decelerating out of warp and in warp. So that's when ascendancies come in, or ascendancies are going to make that time significantly faster, about twice as fast going through that when you're using high-grade ascendancies. So um, for longer distances gate, gate to gate, the ascendancies are going to be faster. And you know it depends a lot on your fit, on your skills, um, what is going to, you know, at what distance the gate to gate needs to be. But I found it's roughly around 15 AU. So when you're in a system and you have more than 15 AU between gates, then ascendancy is going to win out. And most systems you go through, the vast majority of systems you're going to go through, are going to be 15 AUs or higher. So I found it just overall that ascendancies are about 10 to 15 percent faster across a longer route versus nomads. It's not a huge difference, but it, it is a difference. That's why I use ascendancies uh, while doing it. Now, the this set without the Omega, as you can see, I don't use the Omega. I use this 15 implant. This set without the Omega is a couple billion isk, and then the Omega itself is about three billion isk. So it is a hefty isk investment, and it takes a while for these to pay themselves off in increased speed. Nomads. High-grade nomads also, or I think mid-grade nomads, are a bit cheaper um, than that. But again, for most systems, they're going to be a little bit slower getting you through the route, but they do get you off the gate much faster. So if you're worried about getting off the gate um, for your own safety and security, then the nomads are better. Now, of course, if you're using a Weber, then you know a lot of freighter pilots use Webers all the time. In that case, the nomads don't do you any good because you're insta-warping off the gate anyways. So nomads are, are useless and pointless. So in that case, ascendancy is really the best thing you're going to be able to get there. Now, I put a 615 warp speed implant here for him because this is only about 500 million esc versus the 3 billion esc of like the Omega implant. And it's only about 5% slower than the Omega implant. So you still get most of the benefit of this entire set without spending several billion isk on just that Omega implant. Also, the Omega implant requires Cybernetics 5, which is a month-long train. So I didn't want to do the month-long train on him either. So that's why I went with the 615 implant. OK, if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments section below. I'll go ahead and link some of these fits that I talked about today below. I'll also send a link to that ganking calculator uh, so you can take a look at that. and. Make your own version if you would like. And until next time, fly dangerous.